loves me. God loves me from the top of my head to the tips of my toes, from my ear lobes to the end of my nose. God loves my back and my front and my wiggly fingers. God loves me. Should we do it again? God loves me from the top of my head to the tips of my toes, from my ear lobes to the end of my nose. God loves my back and my front and my wiggly fingers. God loves me. So many people wanted to see Jesus and hear what he had to say that he had to sit in a boat and teach the people standing on the shore. He told them many things through parables. Listen, Jesus said. A farmer went out to sow his seeds. As he scattered them, some fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them. Some fell on the rocky ground. At first they grew quickly. But when the sun came out, they all got burnt up because they had no sh roots in the shallow soil. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up around them and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil, and, the and they grew into thirty, sixty, a hundred times more wheat. Listen, Jesus said again, if you have ears, listen. Jesus explained the parable of the sower to the crowd. What did I mean by the seed on the path being eaten up, he said. Well, that's like the good things that God has planted in our hearts, getting snatched away by the devil. And the seed on the rocky path? That's when someone hears God's word and loves it and is full of joy, but their enthusiasm disappears as soon as trouble comes their way. And the seed among the thorns? Well, that's like when someone hears God's word and loves it and is full of joy, but worry and greed take over. But the seed planted in good soil, ah, the seed in the good soil is like the person who hears God's word, loves it and lives it. So it produces 30, 60, 100 times more goodness in their lives. We're going to make a story wheel so that you can retell the story. You need the cut out pieces, you need a pair of scissors to cut them out, some glue and either a split pin or something to put down the middle. I've got a pipe cleaner. So cut out around the big black lines and you should get two pieces like this. Now I've written the words on here with um, in, on the computer but you can always turn it over and write the words on yourself if you would like. Jesus said but as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. So you should have four types of soil and four think types of how the seeds grow. And you're going to use your storyteller like this. So you're going to have the soil at one end and what happens to it at the other and then you can turn it round okay so that what was the first type of soil that the seed landed on
Can you remember? Was it the good soil? No. Was it the thorns? No. It was the path, wasn't it? Can you find the path? There's the path. Don't forget to glue it on. Now what happened to the seeds that fell on the path? Can you remember? Did they grow? Or did something come and eat them all up? The birds. So the birds go at the other side. What the, the soil was and what happened to the soil. first type of soil was the path and the birds ate it up. What happened next? Was it the good soil? No. Was it the stony ground? Yes. Can you see which picture is the stony ground? There we go. With lots of stones. Put some glue on. In our picture. What happened to the plants in the stony ground? Did they grow? Well, they did, didn't they? But what, where were their roots? Were their roots really, really long so they could get lots and lots of water? Or were they very, very short and when the sun came out, they didn't have enough water and they shriveled and died? Can you see which one is the one where they shriveled and died? Here it is. They've not grown into beautiful corn. So what was the next type of soil? It was the thorns. Prickly. Grow really fast. But they're very hard to tell that they were going to be spoil the crop. So there's the thorns and what happened to the, thorn, the, the seed as it grew up with the thorns? Did it have enough space? No, it got choked and didn't grow very well. So it grew a bit but not well. And the last one is the good soil. And what happens when it's planted in the good soil? It grows really, really well. Now you might need a grown up to help you put your split pin or your piece of uh, pipe cleaner. And there we have our storyteller. So Jesus said, when it falls on the stony ground and the birds eat it up, that's like when good things that God has planted in our hearts get snatched away by the devil. Stony ground, the seed on the rocky path. That's like when someone hears God's word and loves it and is full of joy but their enthusiasm disappears as soon as trouble comes their way. So like the sun coming out, it dried the plants up. And the seed among thorns. Well, that's like when someone hears God's word, but worry and greed take over. So it doesn't flourish, doesn't grow well. But the seed planted in good soil, ah, the seed in the good soil is like the person who hears God's word, loves it and lives it. So it produces 30, 60 and 100 times more goodness in their lives. Now you can colour in your pictures if you want. Go and have a go at telling somebody the story of the sower. Where have you been?
I've been harvesting the far field all on my own, waiting for you to come and help. I've been down by the lake listening to that Jesus. He was very interesting, especially to us farmers. You ought to have been there. Hmm. Some of us have to get on with the work around here. What did he have to say? Well, he told us this story. Well, it was more than a story, a parable. He called it all about a farmer sowing some seeds. What does this Jesus know about sowing seeds? I thought he was a carpenter. Well, he was, but that's got nothing to do with it. It was a parable, I said. Okay, so what did he say in this parable? He said that a farmer sowed some seed and some fell on the path and the birds ate it up. Anyone with half a brain could have worked that out. Is that it? No. Some of the seed fell on the stony ground and... Don't tell me. The seed sprouted, but there were no roots, and when the sun came out, they all shriveled up and died. I suppose next he said that some fell in among the thorn bushes, and they were all choked and died too. Yes, he did say that. How did you know? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? All right, clever clogs. So what about the seed that fell on the fertile sat ground? I suppose they got a good harvest of grain from it. Yes, but they didn't all give the same yield. Some plants were quite good. Some good and some very good. There's nothing very clever in all of that. All you're telling me that you think this Jesus is some kind of messenger from God just because he told that story parable oh all right then parable what's the difference there's a lot of difference see i stayed behind afterwards and listened while he explained to his disciples because they asked him what it was all about so what did it mean then it was all about us really us and the kingdom of god those who hear the message don't understand it are like the seeds snatched by the birds the old devil is always ready to snatch any good away from us. I see, but what about the seed on the stony ground then? Well, the stony ground soil is those people who hear the message, get all excited about it for a bit, but it doesn't last. Like a five minute wonder, I suppose. Then when the next thing comes along, they forget all about it. Sort of, or else they give up when the going gets a bit tough. Mm, and the seed in the thorn bushes? They're the ones who hear the message, understand it, but all the other things in their lives are more important, so it gets crowded out. Mm, like money and possessions and what other people think of you. Yes, that's right. You're beginning to get the idea now. So no prizes for guessing what Jesus meant by the seed that fell, fell on the fertile ground. That means those who hear the message understand it and really try to put God first in their lives and live the way he wants them to, so their lives bear fruit. Yes, that's it, but don't forget, some bear more fruit than others. So what do you think about Jesus now? Well, he certainly gives you something to think about. When are you going to see him again? I thought I'd go down to the lake now. I think he's still there, telling some more parables about seeds. Do you want to come with me? Might as well, see if I can improve my yield. I don't think my harvest has been very good up until now. Come on, let's go. Jesus sows the seeds of God's love in our hearts. Can you plant the words in this heart? You can write them, or you can cut them out like I have and see how we can get them together. Should we look at the words? Forgiveness. Caring. Love. Sharing. Peace. And joy. 
Now, which words go together? What do you think? If we share something with somebody, does that make us happy or sad? Yes, sharing and joy. We put those two together. Now, what else can we have together? If we have sharing and joy, then that means we care. Have we got half of our heart? Can you see? Half of our heart. So what do you think is going to be the top bit? Can you look at the shapes and see which one it's going to be? Forgiveness. Now it's going to follow a similar pattern, isn't it? So if we forgive somebody, then we have peace. And if we forgive somebody, we have peace because we love. And there's our heart. Jesus sows the seed of God's love in our hearts. It's time for our prayers. Get somebody to switch your candle on. Jesus said, but the seed planted in good soil, ah, the seed in good soil is like the person who hears God's word, loves it and lives it. And so produces 30, 60, 100 times more goodness in their lives. So what have you, have you got lots of things that you can be thankful for today? Have you had an exciting week? Have you done lots of nice things? Have you got things that you're looking forward to? So let's say thank you to Jesus for all the good things in our lives. All the things that make us happy. Our families, our friends, having a nice place to live, plenty of food to eat. Now, have we done anything that we're not really very happy about this week? Shall we say sorry? Sorry for things that we may have thought, things that we didn't do, things that we did do that we shouldn't have done. Let's say sorry to Jesus now. And is there anything that we need help with this week? Do you need help thinking about what's going to happen in school next term? To ask Jesus to be with you as you think some of these things and let him help you show the right way. And let's say thank you for our families and our friends and everyone who's close to us and anyone we've not seen recently. And if anyone's not well, ask Jesus to comfort them. We're going to say, thank you God for you, and thank you God for me. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. See you next week.